I'm Hazel, it's Saturday again, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WoW news of the week, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week was pre-patch launch week, and what a bumpy launch that was! We had extended downtime, we had endless login queues, we had endless loading screens, we had missing characters, all that good stuff. It seems to be mostly smoothed out and working now. I'm sure some things went extra wrong, I haven't seen servers that bumpy in years, but I'm guessing that a lot of it was just because of how much traffic there was. Just based on how many people I've seen logging back into the game after having been missing for years, it feels like there's a lot of people coming back to check out the pre-patch ahead of Shadowlands, and I'm guessing that that was one of the things that made everything break, but it's mostly good now. I'm getting a little lag still here and there, but for the most part pretty good. So we've got the pre-patch, and there is not a ton of playable content that is new just yet. The Scourge event is not in yet, that's going to be coming later, we don't know exactly when, but in the weeks leading up to actual Shadowlands launch, that will start. For now, it's all about the character customizations, the class changes, and the level squish. After I finally got logged into the game on patch day, the first thing I did was give all of my characters makeovers at the barbershop and then make about seven new ones. The new leveling system is definitely going to take some getting used to. I took a character that was squished down to 45, she had been 110, and she became 45, and I'm like, I'm just gonna go to Duratar and do a couple, you know, beginner quests, finish this right up. And rationally, I knew that those quests were scaled up to me, but what I did anyways was I went and moonfired about six crabs on the beaches of Senjin Village, and then they came over to me and killed me. And, and that's when it occurred to me that maybe six things at once is not how you level. Once I got the rhythm of it, things went much more quickly, and leveling overall as a whole feels so much faster and so much more compelling to me, it's a little addictive. I've leveled a bajillion characters. I don't need more alts, but the ones that I have that are on the go, I have to actively peel myself away from them to come do other stuff because I just wanna I just wanna keep leveling. There's always something cool to play with just around the corner, and the classes feel so different that for me it feels best to kind of relearn them by leveling a character of that class or of that spec to like feel out the buttons one by one as opposed to just staring at the spellbook on not understanding what's happening. So um, I I have been slightly leveling addicted. Speaking of alts, I am 99% sure that old names got freed up with the pre-patch, like names that people had had reserved or saved with characters that were like long, long, long inactive. I'm pretty sure that those got freed up because I was trying to demonstrate, there's a new feature on the character creation screen where when you type in a name, it'll think about it for a second and then it's gonna turn up either a green check mark for available or a red X for not available. You don't have to try to make the character to find out that the name already exists. You can do it right on the login screen. And I was trying to demonstrate that on my stream and I was trying to think of something that was obviously going to be taken so that I could show what the X looked like. I was on a male no warlock and I typed in boy, B-O-Y, and then it said it was available, so I just created that real quick and I am now the proud owner of the male gnome affliction warlock named Boy. I have been leveling him, I picked out a title for him, he is esteemed boy, and I have been having a little too much fun just running around doing boy things. I've determined he will be the best boy that has ever boyed about, and uh, he's, ju he's just great. The new gnome options too are pretty good. I gave him that male gnome beard that has like the Hot Wheels ramp <laughs> shape to it. I'm just having a great time. Other effects of the pre-patch, your post-squish capabilities are kind of all over the place. I'm sure you've noticed you feel a little weaker against some things, and then about the same against other things. I'm finding that against BFA world quests, I'm much weaker. I tried to solo something that I would have just like two shot, and then I had to actually get help to kill it. Some of the elite BFA world quest bosses are harder for me now on my geared character. Um, but I find that my lesser geared characters actually have an easier time because that gap between a very fresh 120 and a fully geared one is much less wide now, so I'm not so worried about my my alts being undergeared. I can still get all of them through Legion Cares in to try for midnight, so that's fine. It does feel a little awkward to be weaker at something that I was previously able to do really comfortably, but I am honestly too busy leveling boy to worry about it, and that's all gonna smooth out once Shadowlands actually releases and we level to 60. An unexpected change that the pre-patch brought, and not a particularly nice one, they broke lockout sharing. ICC lockout sharing, and most likely Old War lockout sharing as well, are no longer functional because you can no longer change the difficulty of the raid inside the instance. This method didn't work for most things, but ICC was the big one, and this is really bad news for anybody that is still farming invincible on a lot of characters and doesn't want to have to full clear the raid every time. Um, it's a weird choice to do if it was intentional, like a str like what a strange thing to break now after years and years of having it be possible. Obviously it wasn't intended, but it also wasn't really hurting anybody, and I can't think of any good reason for this change, which is why I'm inclined to believe in my hopeful, naive little heart that it was just not, like, 
not an accident, but a byproduct of another change that was just part of the pre-patch scaling and the level squish and everything, that something else broke it and they just didn't bother to fix it because it was never intended in the first place. Either way, uh, my heart goes out to people that are still farming their Invincible. It's still possible, you can still do it, you're just gonna have more clearing ahead of you, and I hope you at least get some nice transmog as you run through that raid. We also got a new pre-patch cinematic that Blizzard has released onto their YouTube channel. I don't think you can access it in-game yet. I'm guessing this is going to be at the beginning of the Scourge event, but uh, you can watch it on their YouTube channel. Uh, essentially, Anduin gets kind of yoinked into the sky and kidnapped again. And uh, I say again because it feels like this just keeps happening to our boy. I went and looked up, I like skimmed through his wiki article to try to see how many other examples I could pick out without fully reading it because it was very long and I was I, I wanted to go back to leveling boy. But uh, Anixia apparently imprisoned him at one point. Uh, Moira, of course, held him hostage in Ironforge in the Shattering novel. He got lost at sea and then captured by the Horde in Miss Pandaria. Uh, so this is at minimum the fourth time and I feel like I'm missing some, which is, it feels like a few too many kidnappings for the the king of the alliance but um you know maybe maybe, maybe this will be the last one it was just so easy they just they just grabbed him in other news pvp scaling has been found to be officially not a thing in Shadowlands. No more PvP scaling. If you missed it or you're out of the loop, PvP scaling was a mechanic added in Battle for Azeroth to try to like lessen the gulf between an undergeared character and a fully geared character in PvP by giving like a little bit of a scaling boost to the undergeared character. But it resulted in all kinds of very strange weirdness where you could like take off gear in order to be stronger, or sometimes you would get a gem slot on your gear and it would make you weaker. And it was just very obscure and confusing and uh, not very well liked. And my hope is that we're entering a PvP world where you don't need scaling to help the undergeared players because they'll understand how to get gear, they'll be able to get it through PvP, and they'll be able to get it relatively easily so that you're not struggling along getting one shot forever. That's the dream. Some items such as trinkets, and then of course some spells may have different values in PvP compared to PvE, but it's not going to depend on how much stuff you're wearing. It's just that like a PvE trinket might be nerfed in PvP but left alone in PvE. They They've done that for a long time. In my life this week, on top of my compulsive alt leveling, I got myself some bird feeders to try to feed some birds over the winter. I've been feeding hummingbirds for a while and that's been lovely, but I feel like it's time for me to, to, to branch out. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I set them up last night and I have been repeatedly checking to see if there are any birds yet and then like peering at my neighbors and seeing if they have birds and then wondering where my birds are and it's been less than 24 hours so I need to relax. But I'm very excited. I want to see some birds. I also got myself a coffee partnership this week with the Adventurers Coffee Co. That's a small business in Alabama that does like small batch freshly roasted coffee with like a nerdy outdoors adventure theme. Uh, I really like the coffee and you can save 10% on it now with the code Hazelnutty. So that's fun and yummy. And questions for this week, 54Guitar45 asks, how will the free trial work after prepatch slash launch? I know now it goes into level 20, but there's no way that will still be how it's done. So it surprised me too, but it kind of actually is. Uh, WoW is still free to play up until level 20, but there are some restrictions. So you can only start in Exile's Reach, you cannot choose a different starting zone. Uh, you cannot level with Chromie Time, you can only level in BFA after that. You can earn and hold up to a maximum of a thousand gold. You cannot trade, you cannot use mailboxes, you cannot use the auction house. You can only chat in newcomer chat, say, and party channels. You cannot use any real ID or battle tag chat um, or any like trade or general chat channels. You can now use professions, which is different than before, but you cannot unfortunately pet battle. So still a limited experience, but 20 gives you a fair amount more time than just up to 10, especially because now with the level squish, you can get to 10 in under an hour. Um, 20, I feel like, gives people more time to feel around um, and learn a little more about the class that they're playing with before they decide to buy the game or not. Brian asks, in your recent video of the stream VOD opening up the collector's edition, you open up your appearance collections, which shows several tabs unfamiliar to me. What add-on makes those exist? I'm always looking for better ways to view things like my appearance sets. You have spotted better wardrobe and transmog. I hope that it has been patched and updated. I think I've seen updates for it. I haven't tried to load it in game yet. I'll see if I can grab some footage to throw up on the screen here. But basically the thing that I use it for is this extra tab in my appearance journal showing me different kinds of sets on top of just my raid and PVP sets. The Better Wardrobe and Transmog set tab can show you island expedition sets. It shows you questing sets. It can show you dungeon sets. It can show you raid recolors. And if you're looking for more transmog collecting ideas, but you don't want to go quite 
all the things level yet, Better Wardrobe and Transmog is a great thing to use. It has other functions too. It allows you to like queue sets to Transmog next time, and I'm sure it does more things, but the thing I use it for most is that tab. And Wonderwax asks, what are your thoughts on Covenant locking battle pets? Blizzard recently implemented a restriction so you can only summon certain earned slash purchase Covenant based pets if your character is in that Covenant, which is unlike class hall pets that were account wide available after unlock. So yeah, I saw this and I firmly dislike it. No good. Bad. <laughs> Don't like it. Um, I understand that some of these Covenant pets have Covenant utility, like the Necrolords have this glob that can collect them like a Necrolord specific, I don't know, item or buff or stuff. Like that some of them have Covenant based utility, but I feel like you could have either, you know, found a way to make that utility only work for characters of the matching Covenant, or if you were just hell bent on Covenant restricting the pets, I would have preferred to see them not be battle pets in that point. Make them non-combat pets, like the Candles or the Naru or, um, you know, non-combat pets that don't have battle pet abilities, but still have the utility thing. And then I won't, I'll still mind, but I won't mind as much that I can't summon those in Characters of the Wrong Covenant, because as it is, I'm never going to put a Covenant pet into any of my regular pet strategies, because it's just going to be really awkward when I go to do a pet world quest, and then realize, oh, I'm not on the right character, I'm the wrong Covenant to do this particular world quest strategy, I'm going to have to come up with something else. I'm never going to do that, I'm just not going to use them. Um, and it's just kind of awkward. I wish they would either unrestrict them or, uh, you know, take away the battle abilities. And in the absence of those two solutions, I'm just going to not use them aside from for their utility. And that has been my week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions you would like me to answer on a news video, please leave them in the comments and include the word question. Check out my stream sometime if you want. Take a look at the coffee. If you need a coffee hookup, you can save 10% with my code and have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day.